Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the comments they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Latoya Jade. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live or the replay, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a transformational coach and trainer who will assist you to heal your past, create your future, transform your present, so you can take charge of your destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, guided meditation, and angel oracle cards to assist you if you feel lost to get clear on your reason for being here. And I've also created several transformational packages, a journey through lifetimes, as well as a six-week guided meditation series to help you gain the confidence to take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or an angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guest, like today's guest, Latoya Jade, who will be sharing her story and about shadow work, karmic clearing and our soul's dharma. Now, Latoya Jade is a spiritual mentor, author, and healer. She works with and supports women through the depths of shadow work, awakening to our karmic mirrors, cycles, and limiting beliefs that have thus far led us to a life of self-sabotage, lack, and repetitive suffering. Now, through immersion in Latoya's 10-week online program, change is created both internally and externally. This is a medicinal gift to your mental, energetic and emotional bodies. A realignment, a remembering of a space where you can transmute your pain into power and claim the life, body and experiences you desire. Now, Latoya has also written, uh, self, has written a self-help memoir titled Beauty in the Darkness. I just love that title. A story that gives the voice to the parts of ourselves too often silenced or suppressed. Written in the midst of a spiritual awakening, Latoya bears her soul whilst embarking on a self-led healing journey. So without further delay, hello Latoya and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hello, I'm good. Thank you so much. Oh, brilliant. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions and leave comments and thoughts, either live or on the replay, as both Latoya and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Latoya, why don't you tell us more about your personal journey and about shadow work, karmic clearing and our soul's dharma? Sure. So I um, started with my own personal journey. I went through, well, pretty much my whole life I've seen to have struggled or have felt like I just never quite fit. Relationships always fell short. Um, I never found that anyone really stayed. And I got to a point in my life after my fourth son was born where I hit rock bottom and um, the weight and the the pain and struggle of my past just caught up with me and I tried to take my own life. Um, so in that space, I something came over me and I pulled myself up and I realised there had to be more and it started with me. I needed to kind of give myself a little bit of a self-autopsy, so to speak, and figure out why these patterns kept finding me, why these relationships kept finding me, what I was doing because, you know, like we are responsible for um, for ourselves and ultimately I had to stop putting the blame outwardly and take a good hard look at myself. So that's what I did and I spent six years just in shadow work and self-led healing because part of my journey was um, my whole life I'd placed value in the hands of other people or I'd sought externally things to save me like religion or relationships or friendships. Um, so this was a really personal journey for me and I wanted to, to just self-lead myself through that, to reconnect with my intuition, to 
understand what my body was telling me because I did I knew all along and I'd always get to the end of something and be like I knew that like my intuition or my my body was telling me that why don't I listen um so it was it was a really big commitment to myself and and I'm so grateful for everything I went through it wasn't easy but it's allowed me to get to the part and place that I'm at now which coming from like when I was in my darkest moments I hated who I was I hated myself so much and the the negative talk when I'd look in the mirror or the way I would shy away to now where every single inch of me just feels like I'm filled with so much empowerment and liberation and peace and love love like I've never ever experienced before so it's just become this passion and this purpose and this soul-led drive to help women reclaim that within themselves as well yeah that's absolutely amazing um you know and the fact that you can now look back and go actually these things that happened to me i'm in a way i'm grateful to them because they've they've helped me uh, you know clear 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 maybe stuff that's from past lives for my lineage um, ancestral mm. you know places places like that that I'm making a difference now to my lineage the, the the my next you know the next generation and to other people around us that's right yeah it, it really does come back to self-awareness and self-accountability and and breaking those cycles my mom um you know we had a very rough relationship growing up and I suffered at the hands of her narcissistic abuse however she was only able to love to the level that she had known and if I had not have just had that deep yearning within my soul of there has to be more you know like love is so much more than what I'm receiving then that would have continued on to the into the lives of my children and and then into theirs so I am I'm truly truly grateful for my upbringing and the way that she through her mothering taught me what a mother is through its lack through its absence she you know through her inability to love us as children showed me what unconditional love is through its lack through its absence and um i truly am so grateful for my soul's dharma and the fact that it's it's brought me to this place now where i just have the most incredible perception of of life and um of healing and of spirituality and connective like the way we are all so deeply connected um yeah it's a beautiful journey but not an easy one which is why i wrote my book because um in my darkness and in my struggle i remember reaching out to some help self-help stories and just feeling like something was wrong with me i would read all these positive affirmations or you know practices and tools that they were giving out or even their own personal stories and i remember just sitting there like sobbing thinking I'm past the point of no return. Like this is not working for me. I'm too dark. I'm too deep. This is, I can't shift this. Something is up. So when I felt called to write, I was writing in the midst of my five years of shadow work and giving a voice to those like dark moments where we honestly feel like we're done. We're ready to tap out. Um, that pain that and the memories and the trauma that comes up when you sit in that work and how debilitating it it feels like i wrote from the depths of my soul all through that because i wanted to give that a voice it needs more light when we're you know on the other side of the journey all of that diffuses a little and not not because we're being ignorant but because honestly like we forget how painful and how dark that is so that's why I wanted to capture it because there's women like me that are starting their journey and they're reading these books and are like, no, nah, this, you know, this isn't even taking the edge off the pain that I'm feeling. Um, so I wanted to capture that. I wanted to, you know, I spoke in there about my thoughts of suicide and how it felt like in that moment, it was the only way I could take my power back. I talked about, you know, my experiences of being 
date raped and sexually assaulted my abusive marriage um, and the yo-yo of mindset I played in between that where I felt like being abused every day was better than being alone. Mm. And I captured that and gave a voice to that so that I could bring it up to the surface with awareness and acceptance and compassion and love and then allow it to move through my body. Um, yeah, so it's a huge part of why I do the work I do because we do, we need um, we need voices in those depths. We need a light shine shown on on how dark it actually can get. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and I've known you know I've known many women and some men who just stay go from relationship to relationship to relationship. You know, and you know it can be mentally abusive, physically abusive. Uh, you know, with narcissists or, or whatever. But it's but it's always the excuses. But it's better to be with someone than to be alone. And and mm. that's all, that's always so sad and sad to me uh, and personally because I've always you know I'm one of those people that I I'm happy to be you know if I'm by myself I'm happy to be my by myself you know mm. I've I've never really needed anyone to complete me and I feel so sad that there's so many people out there that. That, that have that so for you, you stepping up you know and sort of like sharing your story and trying to help those those people is, is absolutely amazing because yeah if, if we understand ourselves and we fully love ourselves and see what love really is we, we're not we're not afraid of being alone no and you know i i help i've got a few clients at the moment that are going through a similar thing and you know, they always say to me, will this loneliness end? Like, will I get to the end and will I find somebody? If I learn to love myself, will I find somebody? And I reflect upon that because I remember that yearning even when I was going through my own personal journey and I was doing the work, but I still had this longing of, like, of love, of someone to stay. Um, and to some degree, like, yeah, I still crave connection. I still crave partnership. But the thing that's different is that foundation. Beforehand, I always felt if this relationship ends, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to cope? The pain will be too much. Now that foundation is like, I am not going anywhere. And I love myself unconditionally and I will always be here and I will be okay on my own. I am happy on my own. I love time by myself. That foundation is just so different from I'm acting now from a foundation of inner love and inner acceptance whereas prior I held a foundation that was stemming and growing from a wound which was that everybody leaves that nobody stays that no one's ever loved me and I think that codependency does come from childhoods like that where you don't have that connection to your parents where you weren't shown love where you constantly sought approval from external um, relationships or situations. Um, so you do, you just crave that, just somebody, that presence. But it does, it shifts and it's amazing. And I, I love helping women get to that point of like empowerment and realisation that everything they could possibly need is within them already and not to silence or su suppress those those wants and desires either but to lovingly embody them as an essence so we're on that same vibrational match and then they come and find you yeah ab ab absolutely um you know and it's not just partners you know it's it's people you know it's other other women or um yeah. you know other other, pe other people that just just fold into your life and when you're when you're on that on that on that on that vibration that really yeah. complement and actually allow you not to feel alone as well because and and again I think it's a perception that has been brought down over the years um through media store you know ev everything that it has to be a romantic sort of like relationship relationship you, you know that's that's the only thing in the world that you should be aiming for whereas community can bring 
all all the benefits obviously not the physical stuff because um, we all like physical stuff um but you know c- but can bring the benefits of the unconditional love so you don't need one particular person for it that's right yeah i remember having that realization myself one night and i was in a low moment and i was having a sulk and just like i want somebody to come and cook me dinner and sitting on the couch having a little inner child meltdown and the next thing i get a notification on my phone and my best friend has ordered my favorite meal to my house and i sat there and just went girl you've got to find gratitude in other areas because you have somebody right there that's literally delivered dinner to your door what you were just sulking about like you you've got women there that listen you've got that incredible online community you've got connection with your clients you you've just got to shift that perset like that perception and make it work for you i always say to my clients you know turn that struggle into service find something from your past that you've struggled with and rewrite it into a way that serves your growth now like i said before with my mom through her lack of love she showed me what unconditional love was so rather than sitting in that space of like my mom never loved me i've rewritten it to a point where my mom showed me the depths of love my mom showed me unconditional love in the way that she wasn't able to provide that but it provided so much clarity for me as to what love was and the depths it could be felt and extended to um it's just all about flipping that perception yeah i i love i love the i love that and i love the sort of like example you you've given it is a brilliant way of 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 changing your mindset of changing what's going on around you um and and then and then she coming in so apart from writing everything down um yeah. what what else did you do doing your your shadow work and your and your karmic healing and everything it was a lot of surrender um i think when you go through abuse like that control somewhat comes across as it makes you feel safe so le- learning to let go for me was a really really big one and that is no easy feat i just had to surrender to every single emotion um at any given time and just not label it like i i was so um when i first started the spiritual journey i was sitting there just kind of blocking out all the negative ones thinking that was going to deter me off my path from happiness and enlightenment and joy and I got to a point where the emotions were so deep and dark that I kind of I remember just laying down and being like okay do what you've got to do like I'm here I'm supporting you I'm feeling this I'm going to sit back without judgment and just allow it to be so it was a lot of that it was a lot of um emotional surrendering it was a lot of trust and by trust I mean internally so if my body was telling me or giving me a message it was that unwavering okay let's do this or okay that's what I'm where I'm going to be today um without the buts because i used to my intuition has always been strong but i would always follow it through with a oh but what if this happens or oh but what if i'm overreacting um so it was a practice of removing that too removing the self doubt and piece by piece it's no easy fix but it was a daily commitment to just show up and to practice and if i fell um again flipping that perception as this wasn't a failure it's an opportunity it's an opportunity to step in deeper it's an opportunity to show up and love myself a little bit harder um other things i delved into was um a lot of witchcraft which sounds a bit interesting to some but sitting in ritual and looking at the symbology behind the connection of all living things and the vibrations and the colors and and just feeling that from an observation point of view and just noticing how deeply connected everything is really supported me in feeling less alone um that i wasn't outside of anything that i wasn't here to fit because i'm not separate from um you know we all do even even now like i caught myself a couple months ago 
praying and just being like spirit help <laughs> but i um i got i've got to constantly check myself and be like i'm not separate from that there is nothing outside of me so it it really was a lot of mindset work and and removing the layers of um you know childhood projections and conditioning and and just stripping and allowing it all to fall away to find my own truth and what and what felt right um and that's a lot of what i teach women when it comes to karma is we get stuck on these karmic cycles because we repetitively go around and around and rather than acting upon our own wisdom and the lessons that we've learnt from our past um, and and acting upon what felt right and what felt true, we go to the external and we act upon what we're told is right or what we're told is true and then that keeps us bound to that karmic wheel and that struggle and that suffering and we're we're self-sabotaging we're keeping ourselves in these patterns and these situations um that either keep us in limiting beliefs or um bound to fear or you know resisting change so yeah it was it was a lot of internal work and reflections and ownership ownership was a big one especially the shadow work that I delved into with my abusive husband. I had to really sit there and that was one of the most confronting things I've ever had to do. And, and I've gone, well, this isn't my first abusive relationship. So what abusive behaviors am I embodying within that's vibrationally matching and calling these people in? And when I sat with that, it was a huge self-abandonment. Every time I did that, I was abusing myself. Every time I chose to believe or to listen or to stay with somebody else that was harming me, I was abusing myself. Every time I ignored my intuition, I was self-sabotaging and self-abandoning. Um, you know, control. Control was keeping me in abusive uh, behaviours and patterns because I felt like if I could just hold on tight enough or hold him accountable to love me, then then it would all be okay. I would be safe because he'd still be here. Um, so trying to find those, the most painful parts of your journey and place them inward as a mirror was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, but also the most eye-opening and awakening. Um, and essentially, I guess that is what shadow work is. It's looking at our experiences in life thus far and saying, okay, where's the mirror? Like, where is the mirror to this? What reflection can I see outwardly that I'm holding within myself? And how can I shift that and make that serve me? beautiful um yeah wise definitely wise words um and with wisdom there so how does um so so when when women are working with you how how does your 10 week um, program work so i work one-on-one -on -one and i truly believe when we're dealing with shadow work and inner child healing and matters of the heart like that it, it's really important to have that that personal space um and a lot of my work is channeled and we will will delve to the depths together but basically we find the root of it all and we go back and find where this birthed and where it was created and we go through some of the things i've talked about so that reflection that awareness that that rewrite of our stories so you know when we find those um, limiting beliefs coming up or those mindset patterns that are keeping us bound to lack or um, self sabotage then we rewrite them together we it's a detox of mind body and soul too so we delve into like intuitive eating and movement and connecting and tuning in with your body every single day as to how it wants to be moved how it needs to be nourished how you know emotions that and where they are in your body and what that what that means and where you know where you need to send your energy or focus at that point in time um we sit in shadow work together and we talk about the tools like mirror work um like ritual and and like that deeper connection that it's like an alchemy deep dive um 
and we go through past life regression and and find the link between you know traumas that we're carrying through into this lifetime that just need that you know brought to the surface and into the light so that we have that awareness moving forward um we talk about our patterns and our soul's dharma and how we chose to experience the things we have lived through thus far so that we can serve our our soul's purpose here in this lifetime um and understanding life on a deeper a deeper spectrum too like this is an inclusive world and when we're constantly putting out that negative um, mindset or belief system that's saying the things we don't want then we're vibrationally calling that in that's the energy we're sitting in so again turning that struggle into service and making this whole experience one that serves us and our greater good yeah um, absolutely beautiful beautifully said you, you know and I think even you know every single person even those you know have got so far on their spiritual journeys etc you still have those moments where you suddenly oh you catch yourself okay yeah need to need, need, yeah. need to change that and it and it's knowing and and there's nothing wrong with that it's it's knowing that when it happens that you can change it absolutely it's that that self-awareness and you know we can't ever heal anything if we don't know who we are and that is it's one of the hardest things too because we're ever evolving we're ever changing we're ever shifting and removing and undoing layers so it is a constant um commitment a constant practice and a constant journey um and i think you know that's the question a lot of my clients have is when will we get to the end <laughs> and you know it's just it, it's life and it and it's beautiful because the more you delve into it the like i was even journaling myself personally this morning and the way that my heart expands every single time that i go through a deeper layer of healing is just yeah it feels painful but it feels like an expansive pain like my heart is able to love so much more every time we go through that um so i think again it's that perception we just look at it in the wrong way we we really need to see like so many people used to say to me growing up it's not happening to you it's happening for you and i it used to make me so angry hearing that and now i sit there and i'm like no it absolutely is it, it is all happening for us um and it's all bringing us so much like love and light and consciousness and an awakening and that deeper deeper level of connection yeah totally because reason we're here to enjoy life to that's you know right. it, that's the that's the ultimate goal unconditional yeah. love and joy and happiness every day of your life yeah um, and i think that was an outward search i used to think unconditional love meant finding your soul family or your friends or your partner. But I've realized that it's right there. It really is. You are the only thing that is always going to be there. You are not separate from those, the angels and the guides and the spirit that we call in on a daily basis. We are all one. Um, and that feeling alone, once you get to that space, is just, it makes this journey of life so worth it. Oh yeah, ab, 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 absolutely. I always look at um, uh, angels and spirits and other people. They're just aspects of myself. Yeah, and and yeah. That, that's and I'm aspects of them. So technically, I'm an aspect of you, and you're an, you're an aspect of me because we are that's, all one. That's right. Yeah, the the law of oneness, and that's you know the same as the law of karma or the law of mirrors and it's all deeply connected we're all reflecting onto one you know we're reflections of each other basically yeah absolutely so as you know i do um guided meditations and angel local cards and each week i like to ask my guests whether they would like me to do a mini guided meditation for themselves and those watching or pull an angel oracle card so latoya what would you like me to do I would love a card, please. If only I've got them in my hands. 
Nice in that. <laughs> <laughs> so as always, when I do the cards, I do the cards for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. So although I work with the past, um, when we clear the past, it's so that we can be fully present. And when we work with the future, we know where the future is going so that we can come back and be fully present. So everything always comes back to the present, to the here and now. So what does Latoya and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Latoya and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good? Okay, that one seems to want to come out. Beautiful. So you have got wise leader. You are a beacon for others. Love that. Isn't that a beautiful card? Um, and again, ties in with what we've been talking about um, to today. You know, when 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 you sort of like work on yourself, you do become that beacon to others. Um, you know, and and this is this is saying to you, Latoya. You know, um, with what you're doing, you know, you are a wise leader. You are bringing in this information. You are sort of like helping others, and and a, and a leader is a beacon for others to inspire to to for them to walk their own path. Um, so this is absolutely beautiful. It's real confirmation for you. Um, yeah about this and of course for everyone watching as well you know this is a reminder that you know you are unique you are a wise you know you are a wise leader you are a wise person you have all that inner knowledge all that inner wisdom you just have to find it go within and find it and then when you do you know you start becoming a beacon for others and they then they start working on themselves and then on themselves and then you know you just get this whole ripple effect and before you know it everyone is a beacon for everyone else that's right it's that beautiful ripple ripple of healing absolutely absolutely so latoya do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers just trust yourself i i can't stress that enough um like yeah go with what your body is telling you it communicates with us uh, in a magnitude of ways every single day and if if you're able to get to that space and hold that love and awareness then the rest of it just becomes like second nature beautifully said thank you so much and i hope everyone you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because i know i definitely have so latoya if people want to connect with you or get your book how do they do that so everything is on my website which is um latoyajade.com and i also have an instagram page but the link to the book is on my website as well and you can find all of the information about my program and story and i also write some blogs so um and continue sharing my story and my journey up until now so yeah everything's on the website beautiful and what I do is I will put um, a post in the comments with all the links directly to Latoya's uh, um, uh, website and the book so all you need to do is just click on it and you'll go and you'll go straight there um, so again thank you Latoya for sharing your wisdom and thank you everyone who's uh, um, uh, watched this show um, live or the replay and of course if you have reached a crossroads in your life and you need some guidance in finding the meaning of your life and getting clear on your path then I would love to be that guide for you so please feel free to connect with me so we can arrange a free video call um, to discuss where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny and of course please feel free to join my weekly news letter and receive a free future life progression recording where I take you into the future uh, um, so you can get some guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life as well as a couple of other free gifts so thank you again everyone for watching and I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and of course if you're watching this on YouTube then please feel free to subscribe it always helps me when you subscribe to the channel and you can always hit the bell button to be notified of when the show goes live or when I post new guide meditations and I look forward to seeing you all same time same place next week and again thank you Latoya it's been absolutely brilliant thank you so much take care everyone bye <laughs>